Let me paint a picture for you. It's the end of the world. The shit's finally hit the fan, but you, you're a prepper. Yeah, you covered all your bases, or so you thought. Yeah, you got your food, your water, your shelter, even your bullets and your band-aids. But something, something slipped your mind. You want to know what it is? Well, do ya? <laughs> you forget to decorate and seal your floors, mother. I love the chase and the hunt, and I set the pace when I'm running. I always take what I want, and I always give it 100. Don't need a bank, no, I'm funded. Play the game like it's nothing. I'm always thankful for something. Don't take for granted, stay humble. Now waiting, better believe in your mind, cause it's everything. You can mold, shape, find almost anything. Hey everybody, this is Praxis, and today I'm doing something super critical to my family's survival, and that is staining and sealing the floors in, uh, well, the entire downstairs. I'm starting with this area by the front door. The first place where I worked was in the bathroom, which is just behind me over here, and I did that as kind of a test area to try out what I was planning on doing. When we poured this concrete slab, we poured it with some dye put into the concrete. Uh, there's different dyes that you can add to concrete when it's being poured. Some of them are more expensive than others, and uh, we went with the red and brown dyes, which are a lot less expensive than some of the other darker dyes. The reason we did that is I wanted to create kind of a base coat, and then I figured from there what I would do is I would add on top of it. Now, the first place that we added on top of it was right after they finished doing the pour and they were starting to smooth it. I took some colored uh, concrete powder dyes and I was kind of uh, broadcasting them out like the way you may spread uh, grass seed if you want to grow a lawn. I was kind of throwing those dyes out onto the surface of the concrete so as they were smoothing it, those dyes were kind of getting swirled into the top layer. Now what that did is it made the top layer a little bit darker. It gave it some variety of color so some parts are a little more red, some parts are a little more uh, brown. And now what I want to do is give it its final coloring pass and for that I've got a number of water-based paints that I'm going to be using. Uh, what well, I shouldn't say water-based paints, water-based stains that I'm going to be using. The colors that I've been adding on top of it are some more dark reds, some browns, some uh, like kind of near black colors, and specifically some blue. I'm adding little hints of blue and kind of my inspiration here is I'm kind of working towards kind of like the feeling of granite. Uh, now it doesn't look literally like granite, but I wanted to give the floor kind of an organic, natural kind of feel, almost it looks like dirt. Um, it's an awful lot of work going, that I'm going through to try to make it look like I've got a dirt floor, but I wanted to just uh, give it kind of a natural, uh, kind of feeling like you're outside. I think the human eye kind of abhors, uh, you know, flat voids and homogeneous kind of planes of color. I think that, you know, nature inspires us to want to live in an environment where there is some variety and there is some texture to it. So that's what I'm trying for uh, today. Now the technique that I've been using is uh, sponging it on there. This is just a regular kind of sponge that you might use for uh, you know washing dishes or anything like that. And what I've done to it is, uh, because it starts off as a nice clean rectangle, I've gone and I've torn out some little bits of it. I'm kind of pulling, uh, well, I'll do a few more right here, pulling just little uh, little chunks of it out of there to kind of give it a, uh, well, it makes it look a little, little bit like SpongeBob SquarePants with like all the little holes in it. And I'm doing that to kind of break up the texture. So when I'm uh, putting some uh, stain on here and I'm patting it down around on the ground, I'm not making a bunch of rectangles. I'm making a bunch of, you know, random, again, kind of organic, broken up kind of patterns that are in, uh, indicative of kind of natural feeling, uh, you know, creations. Uh, so I, I've kind of pulled some uh, bits out of the middle here, and specifically I've tried to break up this edge. Uh, I've kind of eaten it in here, eaten it in here, try to just get this a, as far away from a geometric shape as I possibly can. I'm mixing my stains in a small tray, and the only other thing that I'm trying to do as I do this is I don't want to paint myself into a corner. So I'm starting back in this area by the bathroom, and I'm going to kind of sweep across here. There's an egress over here that goes across the front of the windows, and there's also an egress in the back over there. Uh, and I'm just going to get this whole area kind of covered with one color of stain. I'm starting with the blue color because uh, that is kind of the most striking and I want to kind of use that to kind of establish the sort of overall pattern of it which is kind of like flows and stripes a different color. So I'm putting in some of the blue and then after that I'm going to be going over that in some of the warm reds and browns and then uh, the final pass is going to be the black. Once you go black you never go back. 
and then the absolute last pass after everything is dried is I'm going to be going over it with a floor sealer. I've got a, um, it's called Eco Poly or something like that. It's a, supposedly a more uh, human health kind of conscious uh, floor seal. Uh, it's my feeling if you're going to be in an environment and you're going to be covering it in some kind of a coating, you want that coating to be as non-toxic to human life as possible since, you know, it's like you're living in that space. So I, I spent a little bit of extra money and got something that I, th I think I feel has a sense that it is going to be less less toxic or hopefully not toxic at all uh, to, to my family. I, I think it uses like waxes and things like that in there. But I've got a bu bunch of that. I'm using that as kind of the final seal. And I've been putting that on with a paintbrush, uh, just a small paintbrush. And I've done three, uh, three layers of that. And while I'm uh, putting it on for my last uh, uh, seal, what I've decided to do is instead of trying to make it completely smooth because that's just really difficult, I'm working with the medium that I've got which is paintbrushes and I'm trying to make that be part of the texture of the final surface. So instead of going kind of back and forth like you would if you wanted to paint a piece of wood and you want to go with the wood grain, what I'm doing is I'm kind of doing all these little X's and crisscrosses and trying to leave it as kind of a hodgepodge, you know, mixed up kind of random pattern and the effect in the bathroom I think worked out really well and that's why it's really important whenever you're doing something like this to have kind of like a test subject where you start first. You know a lot of people say do it on some part that's not even part of your project like you know I would you know pour an extra piece of concrete outside some, uh, or, or something like that and I practice on that concrete uh, and you know I'm not going to say it's a bad idea but it takes a little bit more time so what I usually try to do when I'm working on a project is I'll start on the area that is kind of the, the least prominent or the least important so I try to get rid of my errors when I'm working on that part. So that's why I started on the bathroom and it was a little bit uh, a little bit of a nail biter because as I was doing it, it wasn't really coming out the way that I wanted to. Some of the seals were uh, you know, expressing themselves darker than I, I would have liked. What I actually ended up doing is I went over some of them with a steam cleaner and I was pulling up some of that uh, stain later on. And to be honest, that just kind of added to the whole texture of the chaos and the natural kind of uh, grit and um, randomness of it, uh, where you had like some areas that were a little darker and some areas that kind of pulled up. So in, in retrospect, having made those mistakes, I think it actually came out a little bit nicer. We'll see what I can do on this large uh, space. I, I hope that hopefully I don't have to go and steam clean up some of it to get it looking as nice as I did in the bathroom. But I just want to share uh, with you guys the process of what it's like uh, to, to color concrete. Again, I'm using water-based stains. Uh, putting those on in multiple layers using a sponge that I've kind of, we call it in the industry, distressed, where I've kind of ripped it up to try to get rid of its basic geometry. Uh, just sponging that all over the place and then I, once it all dries, I'm putting on that final uh, coat of Eco Poly Seal, making kind of a crisscross pattern so that you don't see the strokes in there. That's it. I hope you find this inspiring mostly because this is this is honestly it's not the most important thing for your survival but darkening up your floor it can make the floors warmer and sealing your floor makes them a lot easier to clean and you know if you're in, you know I know there's a bit of a stretch but like if you're in a situation where there's like you know there's germs outside or radiation you know uh, you know fallout ash or something like that you want your floors to be as easy to clean as you can so if people are ever tracking that kind of stuff in you can clean it all up so getting these floors finished and colored and sealed kind of has that kind of a survival uh, benefit to it, but honest to God, I'm just doing it because I think it's going to look really nice. And so far, I'm pretty pleased with it. That's it. Thanks for watching. Hey, YouTube preppers, if you enjoyed this video, I know you're going to love this series where I talk about how I built this entire homestead structure. From start to finish, every single day, we go through the minutia, the little stuff, the big stuff, and show you what it's like to start a project from the very beginning all the way to the end.